Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about Vulkan. Now, Vulkan is the low-level uh, cross-platform graphics rendering library and framework. Uh, it's from the same group, the Kronos group, that do OpenGL, and it's been around for quite a while now, and the big reason why we are talking about it today is because Vulkan 1.2 was just released. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So one of those things about Vulkan, I gotta warn you right up front, it's, it's a tricky API to get involved with it. It's, it's complicated, and for the majority of people watching this video, you're probably not going to work with Vulkan directly. What you're going to probably do instead is work with one of the engines that works with Vulkan. And here you can see the engines consist of uh, it's Banshee, Cider, Protein, CryEngine, The Forge, uh, IdTech, uh, Source Torque. I don't know what that one is. I need to look that up. Uh, Unity, Unreal Engine, and Zenko. Um, and actually, the Godot game engine for the next version, for version 4.0, is also working on a Vulkan renderer. You can also see, uh, in terms of driver support, pretty much everyone out there is supporting Vulkan in some form, with one obvious Apple exception uh, that... <coughs> Apple kind of sucks lately about this kind of stuff. So we're sure you can see we've got support from AMD, ARM, Broadcom, Imagine, um, Imagination, Intel, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, and Verisilica. Now, obviously, the big ones here are uh, NVIDIA and AMD, the two biggest GPU manufacturers on the PC side of things, Intel, who are making their own GPU coming soon and make the majority of integrated graphics cards, and then ARM and Broadcom, your two major uh, manufacturers for basically all graphics chips out there other than pretty much Apple. <coughs> All right, so we're going to move on. So first off, we're going to be talking about the 1.2 release. Now, this is highly technical in a lot of ways. I'm not going to get into a whole lot of that. As I mentioned earlier on, there's not a ton of use cases for the end users. Vulkan is really kind of meant to be implemented by uh, someone working on a game engine or so on. But I will show you some resources at the end. So if you want to learn more about it, you can. So uh, today, the Kronos Group, an open consortium of industry-leading companies, um, Let's see, companies creating advanced interoperability standards announced the release of Vulkan 1.2 specifications for GPU acceleration. Release integrates 23 proven extensions into the core Vulkan API, bringing significant developer request access to new hardware functionality, improved application performance, enhanced API stability. Uh, multiple GPU vendors have certified uh, conformant implementations and significant open source tooling is expected during January of 2020. So the big things we're seeing here in the 1.2 release, uh, we've got uh, timeline semaphores. Now, if you've not thought on any multi-threaded programming. A semaphore is a way to avoid race conditions. That is, when you have multiple threads trying to access the same memory at the same time, a semaphore is kind of like a variable that works as like a traffic cop for that piece of data. So it keeps you from having hangs because two things wanted the same piece of data at the same time. Uh, so that is being built into Vulkan. Now, another area that I've heard a lot of complaining about when I read people that are implementing renderers like on their Twitter feedback or whatever is the memory management model or the lack thereof. Well, Vulkan 1.2 is actually adding a formal memory model. Any one of these things you can click down and get more details on. Uh, to precisely define the semantics of synchronization and memory operations in different threads, that is again one of those things I've heard a lot of developers screaming out for, so I think they're going to be happy with that. Uh, descriptor indexing to enable reuse of descriptor layouts by multiple shaders. Deeper support for shaders written in HLSL. Uh, HLSL is high level shader language, I believe. Uh, that is the shader language of choice for Direct 3D, um, as opposed to GLSL, which is the high level shader language, of course, for the OpenGL framework. And there isn't really a, a shader language for Vulkan. It uses other languages and it's compiled down into a form that Vulkan works with. So that's nice support. So if you're coming from a direct 3D background, you're going to be content there. Now we've got a lot of people basically coming in here saying that Vulkan 1.2 is going to be great. And we've actually got a weird swath of people. So we've got uh, an engineer from ARM. We've got someone from Stardock. Uh, and a couple of other people have come on uh, topic. Now, the thing that you might be wondering is, okay, who is getting support for Vulkan right away? And right here, you can see all GPUs that previously supported ver that supported previous versions of Vulkan are capable of supporting Vulkan 1.2, ensuring widespread availability. As of today, five GPU vendors have Vulkan 1.2 implementations passing the conformance tests. That is AMD, ARM. Uh, Imagination Technologies, Intel, and NVIDIA, as well as the open source MESA, which is kind of a software-based driver for 3D acceleration, um, also supports it for AMD devices. So if you're in Linux and you don't have hardware driver support, you're probably using MESA, and it's got support for AMD chips, at least right now. Uh, so there's pretty good um, amount of support going on for it right here. We've also got um, Stadia is, is kind of one of the people that's talking about how they're pretty content. So like I said, there's a weird mix of people here, AMD, ARM, Stadia, uh, Imagination Technologies, uh, Intel, 
NVIDIA, and then Stardock all kind of came on board to say, you know, how great Vulcan 1.2 is. All right, so that is the announcement. Again, I didn't go into a ton of detail, but any one of these stories, like, for example, if you want to learn more about the semaphores or the memory model or whatever, you can drill down on it. For example, the HLSL, you can see there is a full document basically saying that HL support, HLSL is now a first-class citizen, and you can see here, this is the kind of stuff that the detail levels you can get into. I'm not going to go through each one of them, um, but, oh, and there is that uh, intermediate language I said that the shaders compile down to is spur V or spur five. Actually, not really sure how to say that one. Anyways, the, um, the intermediate language right there. So now we've got good support for HLSL being compiled down to it um, for working with the Vulkan. And as you can see, obviously you can still use HLSL if you're working with Direct3D 12 as well. So that's bound to make some people happy for sure. Uh, it's nice to see that the support is out there already. So if you're interested in learning a bit more about Vulkan, now I do have to, again, warn you, Vulkan is not for beginners. And I would actually if you haven't done any graphics programming, I think you would actually learn Vulkan faster if you learned OpenGL first, which sounds a little um, unconventional or, or weird, uh, but actually it almost seems like Vulkan was written and, and its use case is people with previous graphics programming. You're just gonna be, you have so much setup when it comes to Vulkan. You're looking at probably a thousand lines of code to get a, a triangle rendering on screen. So there is a ton of setup there and you're not gonna understand 3D graphics if you don't have a good grounding in something like uh, Direct3D or OpenGL already. So that would be my recommendation. But if you wanna learn more, they have their resource guide up here on GitHub. You see here all their various different resources, things you can link to, their reference guides, and so on. Uh, tons of tutorials. Uh, Vulcan have been really working on getting more tutorials out there. Or if you want to somehow play in uh, Max World, there is a something called Molten, which maps from Vulcan to Metal, which is uh, you know Apple going their own way in their walled garden here. Uh, and then you see here we've got support for all the various different driver driver people that support Vulcan. And we have another CPU based renderer available out there in the form of Swift Shader. You have a number of different SDKs out there, including Lunar G, which is actually um, the official SDK, uh, Vulkan SDK. This is maintained, Steam is involved in this one right there, and it does some of the, the common tasks for you. Um, and then, you, as I mentioned earlier on, there are another number of game engines out there that currently support Vulkan. And on top of that, the Godot game engine with the 4.0 port is going to support it as well. So this is a great resource. I will link this in the linked article down below. So if you want to learn more about Vulkan, you want to get some hands on some tools, you want to get started. Uh, you want to get some language bindings for it. it. It's all basically, this is the perfect starting guide. It walks you through the, um, the tutorials you need to do things. Now, again, the funny thing is if you go to one of these tutorials and you look at the code involved in just getting a triangle up on screen, you're going to have an idea of the actual kind of level of commitment that you are getting to. This is this is not really showing how accurate it is because the reality is, again, like I said, it's about a thousand lines of code. Another thing that I actually really like is it seems like the Vulkan homepage available at chronos.org forward slash Vulkan, it seems to have been updated and it links off to a number of the things we've got as well. So they seem to be doing a lot better on their whole um, organizing their information, bringing their tutorials together, branding their stuff all together. So it is making getting Vulkan information easier. Uh, so, you know, kudos to the Kronos Group on that development there. So yeah, that is the news. Vulkan 1.2 was just released today. And uh, as you saw in the news release, it's already available on, uh, well, all three major um, desktop hardware GPU providers and um, Mesa as well. So you, you can pretty much start using it today if you so wish. Um, and yeah, that's it. I hope you guys found that interesting. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.